Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Cassandra and I'm going to be taking you through this hour long intermediate yoga flow. This is a wonderful all around practice. We're going to do some hip openers, some back bends, some twists, as well as some binds. So really wonderful if you're feeling a little stuck and stagnant through the upper body and also just really want to get the energy moving throughout. So a really lovely, well-balanced flow. We're going to end with some pranayam, some breath work before going into Shavasana. Um, no props. I'm not using any props in this practice. Whenever we're doing anything with binds, some of you might want to have a strap close by or a belt, but I'll give you lots of options. So it's really not necessary. If you have blocks, always a good idea to have them close by, but again, if you don't have any props at home you can definitely still get through this practice so let's begin lying down on our backs in reclined butterfly pose supta baddha konasana soles of the feet together knees apart and try to shrug your shoulders down and away from your ears i'm going to reach my arms up overhead to invite a gentle opening through my chest Connecting to your breath rhythm as you inhale and exhale through your nose. Making this first connection with your core. When you inhale, I want you to feel your stomach push out slightly. And when you exhale, really feel your belly button drop down towards the floor and almost lift up at the same time. So starting to engage our lower abdominals with the flow of our breath. Take three more breaths here. <laughs> and you can go ahead and open up your eyes. Bring your knees back in. You can keep your feet flat to the floor, hip width distance apart. Make your lower back connect to the mat so there's no gap here. And we're going to interlace our hands behind the back of the head, just really tapping into that core strength a little bit more, very slow and subtle. You're going to inhale to hold. And as you exhale, lift head and shoulders off the mat. Inhale, stay exactly where you are. And as you exhale, straighten and lift your right leg. Hold one more breath. And then exhale, bring everything back down. Inhale, fill up the belly. Exhale, lift head and shoulders up. Inhale to hold. Exhale, straighten your left leg. Inhale, lift up a little higher. And then exhale, lower back down. Once more on each side. Inhale, hold. Exhale, curl. Inhale, hold. Exhale, straighten the right leg. Inhale, lift up higher. Exhale, release back down. Last set, inhale and curl up. Hold, breathe in and straighten that left leg. Squeeze and lift up and exhale to release. Stretch your arms up overhead again, straighten your legs, reach through your fingertips and your toes and let's bring our right knee in towards the belly. And you can roll through that right ankle, flexing and pointing through your toes. Keep reaching out through that left leg, pushing into your left heel. So you're getting a nice little thigh stretch. And we'll carry this over into a twist. So your right knee crosses over your body towards the left. Maybe with the help of your left hand, your right arm straightens out to the side. Push your right shoulder blade into the floor. Thank you. 
coming all the way back through to center squeeze your chest in or squeeze your knee into your chest and curl head and shoulders off the mat so both shoulder blades are lifted push your lower back into the floor and see if you can also lift that left leg a couple inches point through your toes and if you'd like to add on you're going to reach your arms forward so reaching towards your heels here for two more breaths if you'd like to intensify arms will go up overhead one more big breath in here bring both knees into your belly and release down happy baby pose ananda balasana widening your knees grabbing a hold of your toes or your feet as you stack your ankles over your knees push your tailbone into the floor just get a nice thigh stretch before we repeat the sequence on the other side So even as we build some heat throughout this class, we want to stay present to our experience, to keep our breath steady. And let's release. Keep that left thigh in and straighten your right leg to the floor. Reach out through your right heel and just make some circles with your left foot, left ankle, flexing and pointing through your toes, just getting some motion here. And carry this through into a twist so left knee crosses over towards the right side of your mat reach your left arm out try to encourage your left shoulder to anchor itself on the floor and we'll be doing quite a few twists in this practice especially in your twist I want you to feel this action of drawing the lower belly in and slightly up this helps us create a little bit more space Coming all the way back through to center, hold on to your knee and curl head and shoulders off the mat. Try to get both shoulder blades lifted and fill that gap in your lower back. Go ahead and lift the right leg so it's hovering a few inches off the mat. And maybe you're choosing to stay here or you can strengthen further by reaching your arms towards the back of the mat or perhaps extending your arms up overhead as if you were holding a big beach ball one more big breath bring your right knee in give it a little squeeze and release instead of coming to ananda balasana we're going to take a uh, bridge pose so feet hip width distance apart roll your shoulders down palms facing up set to bandha sarvangasana squeeze through your seat push into your heels to lift all the way up hug through your inner upper thighs push into your shoulder blades try to take the pressure out of your neck and feel strength through your legs going all the way down into your feet and curling all the way down inch by inch just rock up so you can take a seat we'll take a seated twist from here so straightening your legs dandasana just staff pose i want you to push your hands beside your hips roll your shoulders back and lengthen the crown of your head up at the same time i want you to push your thighs your calves and your heels down into the mat So as if your legs could grow longer, your spine could grow taller. And let's go ahead and bend into our right knee. You're going to cross your right foot over the top of that thigh. Push that right big toe into the mat as you hug your knee in closer. Reach your left arm up towards the sky. Maintain this length that you've created as you pull the lower belly in and hook your elbow to the inside of that right knee. Right fingertips go behind you for support as you twist a little bit deeper. So notice how the more you draw a belly button in and up, the more you're able to rotate. Keep both hip bones pointing forwards. No slouching, no rounding. And coming all the way back through to center. From here, you're just gonna bring that right foot flat to the floor, to the inside. So just as if you were bending your knee and bringing that foot in, 
and we'll start to play around a little bit with a bind, not forcing anything, we're still just warming up. <laughs> so you're gonna reach and thread your right arm in front of your right shin and just see what it feels like to bring your arms out to the sides. And maybe this is where you'd like to stay, working on a little bit of a forward fold. If it's accessible, you can start to bend at your elbows and see if you're able to clasp your hands behind your lower back. So just notice what this feels like in your shoulders, in your arms. Just finding this first little bind and lifting all the way back up, straighten the legs, Dandasana staff pose once more. Push into your palms, push into the backs of your legs, lift the crown of your head up, lightly squeeze your shoulder blades behind you. And we'll twist to the other side, bend your left knee and cross that left foot over the top of your thigh. You can reach your right arm up, lengthen and maintain this length as you hook your elbow to the inside of that knee and thigh. Left hand goes behind you for support as you twist. Try not to roll to the outer edge of your left foot, really push down into that big toe. Press your shoulders away from your ears. And coming all the way back, we're gonna bring that left foot flat to the floor to the inside of our right thigh and moving, playing around just to see how binds and how our shoulders are feeling today. You're gonna to try to shrug that left arm in front of your shin and maybe just reach out nice and wide. So you're working a little bit on a fold from here. Or if you'd like, you can bend into your elbow and maybe you're just hanging out where you can reach back and see if you're able to hold on to your hands here. Try not to lose the engagement at the back of your right leg. And slowly unwind, come all the way up. Dandasana one last time, grow a little taller. And we'll cross up the ankles, tabletop pose. Just a few rounds of cat and cow from here. So as you inhale, drop your belly, lift the gaze, curl tailbone up. And exhale, contract chin to chest. Keep going through these two poses. Flow with your breath. Do one more full cycle, inhale to lift, exhale to pull it in. And coming back to a neutral tabletop pose, we're gonna do what's sometimes called like scapula push-ups. So I'm keeping my core really tight and engaged, flat back here. All I'm going to do is try to melt in between my shoulders. So I'm melting my chest down, squeezing my shoulder blades behind me. And then I'm pushing up, trying to create more space through my upper back. And that's it. So I'm really only moving a couple inches. You're gonna let it come down as your shoulder blades squeeze together. And then you're gonna lift back up as your shoulder blades widen apart. And just keep doing about five to eight more of these. I want you to really feel this motion. Push into your fingertips and knuckles. Take the weight out of your wrists and try not to bend your elbows. Take one more. So hopefully you should feel some activation here. And then let's bring our right hand behind the back of the head so the elbow is bent. Stay strong through your left shoulder. And we're gonna inhale to lift that right elbow probably just a few inches and then come back to neutral parallel to the ground. Two more like this. Inhale, slightly lift and exhale, bring it back. One more, inhale, and then thread the needle this time. So keep rotating under as you reach your right arm through, lowering your right ear and your right shoulder to the mat. I'm gonna extend my left arm up overhead, coming up onto my fingertips, and I'm gonna lean a little bit more weight onto my right knee and my right hip because we do tend to twist too much in our hips when we do this pose. Push firmly 
into that right palm, into your right arm. And if you'd like, you can add a balancing pose here. I'm going to flatten my left hand to the mat so I have more leverage. And then I'm going to straighten my left leg and maybe start to lift that left leg off the mat, pointing and reaching through the toes. Try to keep your inner thigh rotating in and down. This will help with balance. And very carefully bring that left knee back down to the mat. Slide your left hand back and push up tabletop pose. Let's repeat the sequence on the other side. Left hand goes towards the back of your head. Keep your elbow and this arm parallel to the floor. As you inhale, you're going to try to lift and open up to the side just a little bit and then exhale, bring it back to neutral. Two more, inhale, and exhale. Last one, inhale, into our thread the needle. You're gonna reach that arm all the way underneath you, shoulder and ear lower to the floor. Extend and straighten that right arm up overhead. Lean onto your left knee a little bit more. Push your left arm into the floor. And you can flatten your right palm to the mat. If you did it on the first side, you're gonna play with balance again here on the second side, straightening the right leg and lifting that right leg up. And it's totally normal for one side to feel easier than the other. I know for me, this side always feels a little bit more awkward. Try not to hold your breath, have a little sense of humor. It's totally fine if you roll over and fall. Roll that thigh down so your hips are leveled. And let's carefully bring that right knee back to the mat. Slide your right hand back in and push up. Tabletop pose. Let's walk our hands out in front of us on a Hatasana. Your puppy pose or melting heart pose. So the way I've been doing this pose at home um, is to bring my chin to the mat. This is a lot, so please leave this out if you prefer. You're just going to keep your forehead on the mat. One more big breath. And we all meet in our Sphinx pose, so just sliding onto your belly. Lifting up through your heart, roll your shoulders back, push into the tops of your feet, and make sure you have your feet hip width distance apart here. We're going to do a half locust, half bow pose. Really great to strengthen the posterior chain. So what you're going to do, I'm just going to slide back a little. You're going to come down and reach your left arm forward, palm facing in. I'm keeping the back of my neck long and looking down. You're going to bend into your right knee and reach back with your hand to grab a hold of the foot. We'll go through this in steps. First step, you're gonna kick the right foot into the palm, see if you can lift up, and then maybe go ahead and do half locust pose, so lift the left leg and your left arm. So only keeping your belly touching the mat. Keep the back of your neck nice and long here. Getting a stretch through our shoulder. And let's release, switch sides. Right arm straightens out in front of you. Bend into your left knee. Grab a hold of your foot with your left palm. Start with this half bow pose on the left side first. So start kicking the foot into your palm and then maybe pick the rest of your right side body off the ground. Focusing a little bit more on length as opposed to height. And let's release. Slide your hands back. Let's find our first downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Tuck the toes under. Lift your hips up and back. And our first down dog. Move however is intuitive to you here. Just stretch yourself out. Lengthening through your arms, through your legs. <sighs> Let's 
Let's extend our right leg up to the sky. Keep it straight and squared for now. We're gonna come forward into plank pose and tap your right knee as high up to your right shoulder as you can. Inhale back to your three-legged dog. Exhale to twist. Right knee moves over towards your left shoulder. Inhale up and back. Knee to nose, round and curl in. Look past your palms and step that right foot in between your hands. Lower the back knee to the mat. Push into your feet on Janiyasana. Into your low lunge. So really lengthen your tailbone down, pull through your core and let this lift you up. We're going to open up the arms, interlace your hands behind your lower back, squeeze your shoulder blades and lift your knuckles off of your sacrum. You might want to add a little bit of a back bend here as you lift your heart up. Try not to compress through your lower back. Coming back through to center, you're going to frame your front foot with both palms and you're just going to kick that right heel all the way up towards the sky. Drop your belly, lift your gaze up into your tiger pose. Maybe you stay as you are or you can add this kind of like a bind variation. We reach our left hand towards that right ankle and pull and lift up. Big breath in here. Keep the right leg lifted. Just let your left hand come back to the mat. Straighten and square that right leg and you're gonna pivot and roll onto your left hand and your left leg. Reach that right arm up towards the sky, adding a side tiger pose. Bend into your right knee like our bow pose here. You're grabbing a hold of your right ankle with your right hand and kicking the foot into the palm letting this roll you back so there's a tiny bit of a back bend here and we'll be coming back into our lunge so you're going to step that right foot forward to the top of the mat tuck the back toes under lift your back knee off the floor into your easy twist right arm stretches up to the sky adding a half bind here you're going to bend and bring your right hand towards your left hip. Really roll that right shoulder back as much as possible. Strong through your legs. One more deep breath. Release your hand down, three-legged dog, right leg extends all the way up and back. This time go ahead and bend your knee, open up your hip. <sighs> Straighten and square the right leg and set that leg and the foot down, downward facing dog. Taking our vinyasa, let's inhale, flow through your plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga, urdhva mukha svanasana, upward facing dog, adho mukha svanasana, downward facing dog. Let's take a cleansing breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Okay, second side, please extend your left leg up towards the sky and we're going to come forward to plank pose. Tap your left knee as high up your left shoulder as you can. Keep your hips low. Three-legged dog, send it up and back. Let's twist, left knee towards your right shoulder. Inhale, three-legged dog. Tap your knee to your nose, look forward past your palms and step that foot through, low lunge, back knee comes to the mat, my left knee is stacked over the top of my ankle as I lift up, really maintaining this integrity through the lower body. Keep circling your arms wide, really stretch through your heart as you do this and interlace your fingers the more unusual way so you have your other thumb on top. Squeeze your shoulder blades behind you. Lift your knuckles off of your tailbone. Still kind of pressing our hips forward here. Maybe adding a little back bend as you lift up through your chest.
Big breath in here. And carefully release. Frame your front foot with both palms and we're gonna kick that left heel all the way up to the sky. Drop the belly, lift the gaze into your tiger pose. Right hand reaches back towards your left ankle. Grab a hold of that foot and kick and lift your thigh up even higher. Keep your left leg up, just let your right palm come back to the mat. Straighten the left leg, roll onto your right hand and your right shin and knee. Left arm stretches up to the sky, reach out long through your left leg and then add your bow pose variation here. So you're bending into that left knee, grabbing a hold of the foot and pushing your foot into that hand to help roll your left shoulder back. We're gonna bring our left foot to the top of the mat again, stepping it forward so we can prepare for our easy twist. Back toes tuck under, lift the back knee off the mat, reach your left arm up, really keep your right shoulder rolling back here and maybe add your half bind so you're bringing your left hand, trying to wrap it around the outer right hip. Just notice how your right shoulder often wants to pop forward here, keep it back. So you're really stable in this foundation. Three-legged dog, left hand comes down, left leg goes up, bend your left knee, open up your hip. Big thigh stretch here. Downward facing dog, and we take our flow. Inhale to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. And we meet downward facing dog. From here, let's go ahead and reach our right leg up towards the sky. And we're gonna step that right foot in between our hands to the top of the mat. Warrior two, back foot spins parallel to the shorter edge of your mat as you lift on up. Keep that front knee bending generously, pressing it open. Now go ahead and bring your left hand towards your lower back, reaching it towards this inner right thigh crease. And we're gonna reverse. Right arm reaches up and over. Into your extended side angle. So you're either going to do this with your right forearm resting on your thigh, or you can bring your right hand to the inside of your leg, rolling your right shoulder back. And we're not coming into the full bind just yet. So just keep this half one, rolling that left shoulder. And now let's see if we can straighten our right leg coming into our triangle pose, Trikonasana. You might need to lift yourself up out of this one, especially because we have our legs quite wide. So I'm just resting the back of my palm against the inside of my shin. So I'm maintaining this integrity through my spine, not collapsing and facing down towards the mat. Keep your legs straight, just push your feet into the floor to lift yourself up, maintaining this half bind. We're just going to reverse this triangle, or exalted triangle, I should say. And now let's come back into extended side angle, bending into that front knee, maybe adding your full bind this time. So you're either repeating the version you've just done, or if you'd like, you can see if you can reach that right arm underneath your thigh, holding on, clasping your hands. I don't want you facing here towards the ground. I want you to be lifted and rolling your left shoulder back. We are not here forever. One more big breath. Look down to the floor to help you with support. Bring your fingertips out in front of you in front of that foot and we're gonna kick and lift that leg up. Standing splits. <sighs> Just folding in and lifting that left leg up as high as it'll go. Utkatasana, chair pose. Bring your big toes together to touch, heels apart, bend your knees, drop your hips, and lift up through the upper body. 
Put a little bit more weight into your heels. And press to stand, release your arms down. Let's take our flow from here. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And you can step or hop back, flowing through your Chaturanga into your upward facing dog. And we all meet in downward dog. <sighs> Pushing back into your heels. Let's find the sequence on the second side. Left leg stretches up. And you're gonna step that left foot forward between your palms, Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. So right leg is straight, left knee is bent. Add a little half bind here. So you're gonna bring your right hand towards your lower back, reaching for this thigh crease. Really press that right shoulder down and let's exalt left arm up and over, side body stretch. into your extended side angle, maybe just resting your forearm on your thigh or dropping lower. Left fingertips come down to the mat, not taking our full bind just yet. Stay in this variation. Into our triangle pose, go ahead and straighten that front leg. Maybe lift so you don't have your hands on the mat. Remember, I don't want you to be facing the floor. I want you to be thinking of rotating and spinning your chest up towards the sky. So don't worry about how close your left hand is getting to the mat. Push into your feet so you can lift up and we'll just find a side bend here. Left arm reaches up and back. And now let's come into our full expression of the pose. Extended side angle, bend into that front knee. Either choose the previous version or you're gonna reach that left arm under your thigh, holding on, clasping through your hands, rolling that right shoulder back. Try to keep your hips nice and low. Totally normal if this feels very different on one side than the other. <sighs> and look down towards the floor so you can release the bind. Fingertips out in front of you, and we're going to step up, standing splits. <laughs> Utkatasana, big toes together, knees apart, or sorry, heels apart. Bend into your knees, lift up through your chest and through your arms. Still even here, draw the lower belly in and up. Let this support you in the pose and press to stand, release. And let's take our flow, inhale, arms rise. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Step or hop back. I like stepping back, finding plank first, and then lowering, it's up to you. We all meet in downward facing dog. <sighs> Just push your chest back towards your thighs. And let's go ahead and bring our knees down to the mat. We're gonna come into camel pose, Ustrasana. Knees, thighs, our hip width distance apart. I like to do it with my toes curled under. You can have them pointed back, whatever you prefer. Most important here is that we're not curving into our lower back. I really want your tailbone to be lengthening down, pointing down, drawing this low belly in. And you can bring your hands towards your lower back and you're almost pushing your pelvis forward. At the same time, you're lifting up and over. And you might choose to do the expression of the pose from here, where you can grab a hold of your heels, squeezing your shoulder blades behind you. Try to hug through your inner upper thighs to support your lower back. And you can tuck your chin to your chest first before lifting up and then just point your toes back and rest your hips over your heels. 
And I'm just kind of tucking and releasing here. So kind of exaggerating this movement until you can find your neutral stance for your pelvis. We'll add just a little simple twist from here. Left hand to your right knee, twist over to the right. Releasing back through to center, second side. Right hand to your left knee, twist open. back through to center widen your knees as much as you'd like we're going to take a wide like a child's pose so just slowing things down a tad we still have another standing sequence to go through but i want to give you this opportunity to slow down a little to catch your breath to tune back into yourself and to really check in to see how you have been honoring your body throughout this practice. Take five breaths right here. start to lift ourselves back up we're coming back to downward facing dog Adho Mukha Svanasana take your time okay now this is a challenging little pose I've done it a few times in classes before it's a lot of fun um, you just have to have a sense of humor about it if it doesn't work out it's not a big deal from your downward dog you're gonna reach your right leg up towards the sky bend your right knee and open up your hip like we were doing tiger pose, you're going to see if you can use your left hand to hold on to your right foot. So you can start by just walking your palm in. You need to look at something that's not moving to help with your balance. And just try to grab a hold of your toes or of anything. Ooh, and see if you fall out of it. It's no big deal happens to all of us. Just take a few more moments to play around with it. Now go ahead and bring your left hand back and we're going to find wild thing from here. So just keep rotating that thigh over until you can drop the toes behind you. Push into both legs and reach that right arm up and over. Coming back through downward facing dog. We're gonna play around with that on the other side. Gather your strength, left leg up, bend your left knee, open up your hip. Maybe start reaching that right hand back. Seeing if you can grab a hold of that left foot. Sometimes the hardest part is just figuring out where your foot is. I promise it's back there somewhere. Again, asymmetry in your body is normal. Ooh, it's normal to be more coordinated or stronger or more flexible on one side. And we're coming from here into wild things. So your right hand comes back down, keep spinning over, drop the left toes back behind you, push into your feet. <sighs> downward facing dog and we're gonna step our feet forward to the top of the mat rag doll pose hold on to your elbows <sighs> and just let yourself drape over your legs <sighs> Mm. 
And you can release your hands, bend your knees even more, push into your heels so you can roll all the way up and come to stand. <sighs> Let's open our legs wide. And we're gonna do little skandasana variations or side lunges. Heels in, toes pointing out towards the top corners of your mat. And we're gonna bend into our right knee as low as you can go. Flex into your left foot to drop down here. And just try to negotiate the space. You can definitely keep your hands down, but just see what would happen if you lifted it up. Can you still maintain your stance? And we'll go to the other side. So just bend into your left knee, flex through your right foot. Again, you might just need to negotiate and change your stance and the distance a little bit here. Keeping your chest slightly lifted. And we're gonna do one more on each side with the option to add a bind. So we've been working a lot with binds. Doing the full expression now, bending into your right knee, drop your hips. Maybe just stay right here and forget about the bind if you wanna try it out. You're gonna bring that right shoulder as far down as you can and crawl the right hand out. Open your arms into this big diagonal and then maybe bend into the elbows, reach to wrap around that right thigh. Slow, steady breaths. Let's release this bind, make your way to Skandasana on the other side, left knee is bent, right leg is straight. Mm -hmm. So again, here, you're gonna try to bring that shoulder down, reach your left arm out, right arm stretches up, and then bend into your elbows, clasp behind you. One more big breath, release this bind and just come to a wide-legged forward fold. So turn your feet in parallel to the shorter edges of your mat and whatever arm variation you'd like here. Just let yourself dangle. Just bring a little bit more weight into your palms so you can walk your hands out in front of you. Come up onto your fingertips so you have a flat back here and make sure you're not leaning all the way back in your heels or all the way forward into the balls of your feet. We'll add just one more, last little pose, one twist here. Left hand is underneath you, right arm stretches up. Switching sides, right hand down, left arm rises. And let's release toe heel, your feet back in towards one another. Malasana yogi squat. Sink down, use your elbows to push your knees open a little bit wider. And sit your hips on the mat, just open your legs into a straddle. So we're starting to slow things down now, working on deeper flexibility stretches and just relaxing our body overall. Find a side bend first so you can slide your right hand down your right leg, left arm reaches up and over. Same kind of principle we've been working on all class, roll your left shoulder back. Think of opening and spinning your heart up towards the sky instead of folding in towards the ground. Lifting up, second side. So just same thing, this time right arm reaches up and over. Roll your right shoulder back. You can relax your head and your neck.
Coming all the way back up and this time head to knee, reaching towards that right leg. I'm making this a passive fold. I'm not pushing, not pulling. I'm letting my spine round and gravity do the work for me. Slowly lifting up, head to knee to the other side. up one last here forward fold right to the center five deep breaths your palms in lift up through your chest and you can use your hands to help your knees bend and I'll give you an option here we're gonna come into fire log or square pose but this might be too much so fire log is traditionally done we're gonna stack one shin over the other so I'm aligning my right shin on top of the other ankle over knee knee over ankle flexing at both feet you might have more of a gap. It's totally fine. We're trying to minimize it. And then we're going to be adding a twist. If you know already this is too much for your hips, all you're going to do is stagger your right shin. Just place it slightly in front of your left one and you're still going to twist and fold. Still targeting the same space, just as good one or the other. Just choose the variation that is best suited to your body today. <sighs> So finding your alignment, we're all going to be rotating and twisting over to the left. And if you had just one shin in front of the other, you can just walk your hands out and fold. If you're doing this option that I'm doing here, I like to bring my elbow to the inside of my foot and then I'm pushing my palm into the fist to lift myself up and twist even deeper. This is an intense pose. So if it's too much, please honor your body. There is no judgment or expectation here. Two more breaths wherever you are. And we'll lift all the way up. And we'll just switch sides. So this time, either just having your left shin slightly staggered in front of the right one, or stacking left shin directly on top. <laughs> Flexing through the feet. This time we're gonna be bringing our chest facing over towards your right thigh and making your way down, either reaching your arms out, or you can bring your elbow to the inside the sole of the foot right palm goes on top to push against and twist a little deeper draw your lower belly in Three more breaths. And go ahead and lift up, release the cross of the legs. Might feel good just to straighten them out in front of you or to do a little windshield wiper motion.
And before we come down and really close with Shavasana, we're actually going to do a little bit of pranayam, so a little breath work. So you can set up in any way that is comfortable to you. We're going to do um, Sama Vritti Pranayam, which is box breathing or equal breath. It's very simple. So Sama equal Vritti, mental fluctuations. Um, this is really a breathing technique to help calm the mental chatter and to really bring you back into yourself. It's super simple, box breathing. Imagine a box that you're drawing with your breath. You're going to inhale for a count of four. Hold the breath in for a count of four, exhale for a count of four, and hold the breath out for a count of four. And we're gonna do that eight times. So I'll do the first round with you, and then the last seven you can do on your own. So close your eyes, clear your breath. It's all in and out through the nose. So exhale fully, and then inhale one, two, three, four, hold one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four. Keep going seven more times. Three more rounds. Last one. Come back to a natural flow of breath. We'll be coming into Shavasana, our final resting pose. If you prefer, you can instead just do a seated meditation. So either stay sitting or just lie back down, get really comfortable. I want you to really take the full time in Shavasana. Don't stop the video and don't rush away. Let yourself have these few minutes to integrate this work to process it and to just give yourself permission to relax and to receive so we'll have about three or four minutes here in Shavasana close your eyes and I'll let you know when it's time to reawaken and we'll close our practice all together
to breathe deeply. Find that same breath you had at the beginning of class where you feel your stomach rise as on the inhale and your belly button drop down and up on the exhale. And this new breath can help to energize you and wake you up. Move a little through your extremities. Turn your head side to side. Let's reach our arms up towards the sky. Just lengthen out here. Big stretch. And we'll come back up to take a seat. If you were down in Shavasana, if you were just doing seated meditation, hold as you are and we'll be joining you. And when you sit up here, simply bring your palms together at the front of the heart. Give yourself thanks. Show yourself some gratitude for taking time out of your day to practice, to do something for yourself. And we'll close by chanting Om one time. Let's inhale to chant. Breathe in. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing this hour-long flow with me. I would love to know how this one went for you and how you feel in your body now and in your mind and just overall. Leave me a comment before you go. Please subscribe and hopefully you'll be practicing again with me very soon.